Not to be confused with American basketball coach Keith Richard, Keith Richards is one of the ultimate rock and roll heroes of all time, symbolising everything about the genre that he helped to forge. And with a career that has been exploding since 1962, Richards has amassed a pretty impressive collection of guitars. And with that in mind, I'm Joe from the Guitar Nerds podcast, and this is the Guitar Nerds Top 5 Coolest Keith Richards Guitars. In at number 5, one of Keith Richards' first Rolling Stones guitars, probably my second favourite guitar manufacturer of all time, Harmony, Keith Richards' Harmony Meteor H70. In Richards' book, Life, he discusses how he chose this guitar, deliberating between the Harmony and a Hawk, and eventually settled on the Harmony because it had two pickups instead of just one. Richards used the incredibly cool oversized hollow body in the Rolling Stones' first ever TV performance in 1963 on ATV's Thank You Lucky Stars, Rolling Stones' first single Come On, and second single I Wanna Be Your Man. The guitar itself is so quintessentially 60s and whilst Richards moved away from this style of guitar pretty quickly, the harmony itself is still synonymous with the original Rolling Stones tone. Allegedly, Richards took this guitar as payment for a gig he did for a band in America, the Les Paul Jr. nicknamed Tumbling Dice, or Dice for short, due to an old dice decal that had previously been on the front of the guitar is one of Richard's most iconic instruments. Keith started using the TV Yellow well-used double cut around 1979, almost exclusively for the song Midnight Rambler, and he still plays it today on some other songs, almost always capoed on the 7th and in standard tuning. Making its appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show in November of 1969 and used on the subsequent tour, Richard's 1969 Ampeg Dan Armstrong plexiglass guitar was at the time a slice of the future. Richard's was among the first to play a Dan Armstrong and largely responsible for its popularity. He played it up until 1971 when it was stolen. The heavy weight and unique tone of the Armstrong was a very different affair to anything Richard had used previously, but it certainly made the unique instrument work. And in 1971, Keith bought another two of these guitars, which he used during the two-month American tour in 1972. Richard's Keith Burst 1959 Les Paul Standard is arguably the Les Paul Standard that started rock and roll's obsession with the 59 Les Paul Standard. At the very least, following Keith's popularisation of the model guitarists such as Eric Clapton, Peter Green, Paul Kossoff and Jimmy Page all picked up a 59 Les Paul Standard as their main guitar. Played by Keith Richards between 1964 and 1966, the Bigsby fitted Les Paul was one of the shortest lived main guitars in Keith's catalogue. Used for only one tour and probably on the Rolling Stones now, the Rolling Stones number no. two. However, the guitar had a pretty decent post Richards life. On the 31st of July 1966, Eric Clapton appeared with what was probably Keith's Les Paul at the National Jazz and Blues Festival in the UK. And later, a pre-Rolling Stones, Mick Taylor bought the guitar from Richards as he no longer used it. Two years later, the guitar once again returned to the Rolling Stones, but now, of course, is played by Taylor. He first appears with it in his debut concert with the Stones, playing at Hyde Park on July 5th, 1969. And in at number one, the Newman Jones. No, no, I'm obviously kidding. You know what this one is going to be. It can't really be anything else. It's the Micawber, a gift from Eric Clapton for his 27th birthday. Micawber is one of the most legendary telecasters of all time, wonderfully customized by Keith. With a Gibson Path pickup in the neck position, famously, the pickup was installed backwards with the pole pieces closer to the body than the neck. Richards also had a Fender Champion lap steel pickup in the bridge position and installed a brass bridge with individual saddles so he could remove the very top saddle for his five string setup in open G tuning. Named after a character in Dickens' novel The Personal History, Adventures, Experience and Observation of David Copperfield, the younger of Blunderstone Rookery, or David Copperfield for short, the Micawber is one of the guitars that Keith himself says he cannot live without. So there you have it, the Guitar Nerd's top five coolest 
Keith Richards guitars. But what do you think? What did I miss? What did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments, I'm sure you will. Like and subscribe for weekly videos and we'll be back next week with more of this guitar nerdery. Farewell.